The first lesbian bar to open was San Francisco's Mona's 440 Club in 1936. In the 1960s, the gay liberation movement allowed for the visibility of women identifying as lesbian and bars became a space to gather. After the 1969 Stonewall Riots, lesbian bars solidified their importance in that people came together in a safe space to organize themselves for movements and to support others within their community. Hershey Bar was originally opened on March 7, 1983, and was very important for the lesbian and LGBTQ community. It provided a safe and comforting space for lesbian women to find themselves and to feel accepted in the midst of rejection by peers or family members. Annette Stone, founder of Hershey Bar, was described as a mother to the motherless. Women of all ages, races, and professions gathered within the walls of the Hershey Bar and were different together. It created a close community and a lifeline for many women who felt alone or outcast because of their sexuality or lifestyle. Hershey Bar hosted many events within the bar. The bar hosted comedian Kate Clinton on October 28th of 1984, who was known for her commentary on gay and lesbian points of view. They even sometimes hosted wet t-shirt contests in the Miss Virginia contest for gay women in 1985. Not only did Hershey Bar host recreational events, they also were very involved in giving back to the community. Many nights they would have a cover charge go towards the Child Custody Defense Fund, one night even raising as much as $400 through the fund in August of 1985. The Hershey Bar was a place where people could come and be themselves. It was a place that felt so safe that it had a sense of community inside of it. Even some workers like Bert McManus, the bartender of Hershey Bar, had worked there for 30 plus summers. There were a lot of regulars that came into the bar year after year. They always played the songs that were most popular during that time period. McManus described the physical foundation of Hershey Bar as the shape of a straight cigarette box. When you walked in there, there was a pool table, and then right after the pool table, there was a bar filled with chairs all around it. In the center of Hershey Bar, there was a huge dance floor filled with a variety of different kinds of women. The bar was always packed. McManus felt the environment of the bar was great to be in and was a sense of home. News circling the closing of Hershey Bar spread quickly. The land that Hershey Bar stood on was bought by the city of Norfolk for $1.5 million. Supporters of the bar tried their best to come up with incentives and compromises. What I'd like to ask is that you think about this group of people, all of us who need this place, who love this place, who find comfort and home in this place. To mourn the closing of Hershey Bar, supporters had a wade to grieve the loss of their beloved bar. Most members believed that the city closing the bar was rooted in homophobia, but Mayor Kenny Alexander shared a personal story about his mother, who was a lesbian, in order to reassure people that the city of Norfolk was not homophobic at all. The last day that Hershey Bar was open was October 31st where the owner, Annetta Stone, threw a Halloween party. The biggest police thing I remember is our closing, which really pissed me off because the most police cars we probably ever had there was three in our whole time. So for the city to bring all those cop cars at the end, plus or the surrounding area, I was told all the circumference, I was just like, really? What, what, even if we wanted to sit in there, what you gonna do, drag us all out? Uh, it just, it just was it, uh, just so shameful. I don't even know what to say. The building was finally closed in February of 2018. Hershey Bar, now a vacant lot surrounded by street noise and construction, is a ghost of its former self. Once a home built with love, smiles, and dancing is now another empty lot that is passed day by day by commuters unaware of the joy that used to be present in the local area.